Continuing from the last unit, we proceed with our discussion of visualizing convolutional layers as fully connected layers. Let's denote the source signal as x1 and the kernel as k. x1 and k has 5x5 5 5 and 3x3 3 3 dimensions respectively. Here I want to clarify one thing. In this figure, the numbers inside x1 and x2 are indices and not the activations. However, the kernel K represents the filter weights. As discussed in the last video, the kernel is placed on the source signal and the dot product in the overlapping region is stored in X2, which is the resulting signal. For each location in X2, the dot product between the kernel and the overlapping area in the source signal is computed. As X2 has 3 by 3 dimension, so this process is repeated 9 times. Now we need to unroll the 2D matrices and vectorize them. We have shown two vectors, one of size 1 by 25 and another of size 1 by 9. Assume that these are the two fully connected layers L and L plus 1 respectively. Let's visualize the convolution operation in red color. The overlapping area in the source signal is at index 0, 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, and 12. For the fully connected kits, let's draw lines to denote the presence of connections and envision it as the overlapping region between the source signal x1 and k. As the result will be stored at first index in x2, the connection ends on index 0 in layer L plus 1. Here an important question needs to be asked and I will pass for a moment you need to think. How about the connections from the remaining units in L to L plus 1? There are no connections. Why? Because during convolution, we only perform the dot product on the overlapping area. This is the main reason why we draw connections or connections only from some neurons in layer L to L plus 1. Let's see how this is represented in the weight matrix W. The size of W is 25 by 9, so when X, which is 1 by 25, gets multiplied with W, which is 25 by 9, we get X2, which is 1 by 9. Now the connections in the red color are represented by the first column in W. What do we observe? The first column has a size of 25, however only 9 elements belong to kernel K. The rest of the elements are 0. So this column has 16 by 25 sparsity, which is 64%. Now let's compute one more example for the purple color. The corresponding column in W is the last column. Let's populate the whole weight matrix W. Let's factorize X1 and take W and multiply the two. We get X2. And now to convince you, that the two representations are same, the conventional way of doing convolution and the way in which we have shown where we multiply a vector with the matrix and get x2, that these two methods are the same, we need to solve a numerical example. However, that will be too laborious. In the next video, we therefore show simulations for this process where we will compute the result of both operations. For now, let's ask few questions. Let's compute the sparsity in the weight matrix W. I think it will be the same as 64%. Question number 2. How many unique elements are there in the weight matrix W? Please pause the video and answer the question. The unique elements are only 9. Because the weight matrix W is constructed from K, which has 3 by 3 size. This is the main concept behind weight sharing in convolutional architectures. Let's closely observe column 1 and column 2. Both columns are exactly same. Then what is the difference? Column 2 is shifted downward by one element. I said shifted. What can be more exact term? Circular shift. Because the zero from the bottom has appeared at the beginning. If you forgot circular shift operation, watch the associated brief video. If we take column 1 as the reference, then other columns are shifted with the following amount. What does this all mean? 
It means that we do not need to reserve space for 25 by 9 weight matrix. You can only reserve space for 25 by 1 weight vector and shape it whenever needed. We can come up with intelligent ways for this purpose. Let's evaluate this formulation with a piece of code on light.